Today we've got some helmets to compare for you guys. Let's get right in. Alrighty guys, so today we're going to be comparing the Rurock Atlas 2.0, right over here, to the Simpson Ghost Bandit. Now, Rurock has since released, what, they're on the 4.0 right now, I think, so unfortunately I don't have the latest model right now. But for now, I felt like it'd be worth doing a comparison video, telling you guys my thoughts on both and uh, which one I like better. So we're gonna hop right in and uh, yeah, we're gonna get to it. Alrighty, so we are going to start with the Simpson. Now, this is the Ghost Bandit, so this is like top of the line for Simpson and for what they're running. This is a really solid helmet, honestly. I think it's kind of the most common, I would say, club style helmet that you're gonna see. A lot of the dudes that are in the stunt world are running Simpsons right now, so the guys that you see wheeling their Harleys, like absolute maniacs are running this helmet. Mine is actually the Aurora Ghost Bandit, which is pretty cool. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this. If we can, I'll cut to B-roll right now, but this thing actually glows in the dark, which is pretty sick. Um, they release these limited editions every now and again, and I was lucky enough to get my hands on one. Let's go through some of the features on it. So obviously you have a full locking face shield here. It locks into any position that you want. Then on top of that, you've got this nice little tab here on the side. And if you flip that, you drop down the inner shield. Now I like to keep mine clear. If you're going from like day to night and you don't wanna run a transition shield, one of the really nice things is you can start with a tinted shield like this for the daytime rides and then as it gets dark or full nighttime, you can switch to this and you don't have to have like glasses on underneath or anything like that. They don't recommend it because this isn't obviously as strong as the, the full protection here, but I mean, I use it that way. So, you know, do with it what you will. Now, besides that, we have a full lock. This is this little tab here on the side. So if you wanna really lock it into place, like that's that's really solid. That's not going anywhere now. The interior liner, I find it to be one of the most like comfortable liners that I've ever tried in a helmet. As far as wind noise and stuff is concerned, it's it's not the quietest in the world. It's got a pretty standard little, you know, loop buckle here. But yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the base level there. And, um, you know, now we're gonna hop on over to the, uh, the Rurock, so yeah, let's do it. Alrighty guys, so now we're talking about the Rurock. Couple things to take note of on this helmet specifically. This is the 2.0 model, so they have since released two new versions of this helmet. So we're gonna take you through the features that I think are pretty much the same on the new versions. I have seen the new versions. I haven't actually gotten to test it yet myself, but as far as the 2.0 is concerned, we have a couple features that are pretty much the same. First and foremost, same locking mechanism for their shield, locks in different positions. The field of view on this helmet is so crazy wide. It's great. Doesn't feel like claustrophobic or anything in there. Doesn't feel like you have limited visibility out of your peripheral vision either. No interior shield on this one, no interior visor, but I think the aerodynamic design of this helmet is probably a little bit better, I would say. I think it gives it a little bit less buffeting. Um, the new models, I know they've changed up the vents, so I can't really talk about that too much, but the back portion here, you can see they have their own standalone comm unit, which is really cool. It's not actually a comm unit. You can't actually really use it for communication, but as far as listening to your music, this is one of the coolest designs that I've seen. They've actually updated this one as well. So this is the older model that they have in here, but having this actually kind of like built into the back of the helmet where you have these buttons accessible to you, I think is great. But my favorite part of this helmet by far is this. This little clip here to actually lock it into place once it's on, that's, it's done. Like that right there, I just did it. I would recommend this helmet almost solely because of how easy that is to get on and off. I mean, I can't even, I can't even explain how much I love just that one feature. I don't know why more 
helmet companies don't manufacture their helmets this way. I don't know if it's a patent thing or if it's like they just don't have access to it, but dwam. I promise you don't think it's a big deal until you've actually tried one and then you know. It's, it's an absolute game changer. Comparing them side by side is, is that's, that's one thing. That's all well and good. But I think the only real way to really get a fair comparison, really kind of understand the difference, what it really feels like is to see them on the bike. So we're going to go one after the other direct shootout. I'm going to give you my direct thoughts once we're on the motorcycle and you know, then you guys can make your decision after that if you're in the market for either one of these helmets. So let's go hop on the bike and we're, uh, we're gonna go take them for a spin. All righty, y'all. So as Cassidy in the studio just told you, uh, we're starting back off with the Simpson. So it's getting a little bit dark, so I figured I'd show you guys this feature first. Um, this is the clear inner shield that I use sometimes for night riding doesn't like super block the wind or anything you know you gotta kind of deal with that a little bit and then on top of it I don't know like I said this isn't like rated for rocks or anything coming up at highway speeds but again in a pinch it'll do the job so get rid of that and then now we get the full experience so I have my uh, my mic that I usually use for moto vlogging set up in here right now so hopefully the audio is capturing accurately and you guys can kind of hear what this one sounds like we're about to get a little bit more speed going here so hopefully after we do that you'll be able to really kind of hear it a little bit more but yeah I mean I really like the Simpsons I've always been a really big fan of the way that they look um, I've heard some not so great rumors that they're kind of um, repurposed you know, overpriced other kind of helmets. I don't know if that's true or not, but as far as my experience with Simpson is concerned, I've been really happy with it. Um, you guys can hear, it's decently quiet. It's not like, you know, once we start moving here, we get a little bit of wind noise. It's not the most quiet helmet in the world, but it's definitely not the loudest that I've ever worn either. Comfort wise, a little bit subjective, so I don't want to talk too much about that. I think that that's really kind of more up to your own personal preference. So I think when you find a helmet that you like the shape of for your head, that becomes more important really than a lot of other things. But like I said, the interior liner on this one is really, really high quality. So I really do enjoy that for sure. That's, you know, that's a really nice feature. Right now I have all the vents open. It's a little bit warmer as you guys can probably tell. Um, and I think that sound quality of it is, is pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over now. Um, I'm gonna go grab the Rorock and I'll let you guys know my thoughts. So give me two seconds. my favorite feature of this thing has definitely got to be that buckle I mean it just you can't beat it honestly like it's the easiest on off system for a full face helmet ever and it makes getting you know getting your helmet on when you're like on a group ride you've got people waiting on you whatever it is makes it super super easy to do so really really big plus there um, you guys can hear kind of the sound difference in this one I would say comfort wise I think that this one for me is a little bit roomier. Um, I'll throw the sizes. I actually don't remember the size off the top of my head, but I'll be sure to throw them up on the screen right now for this one. Try the other one there too. But the fit, I would say, for this one is a little bit roomier. It's definitely not quite as dumb as that. Thank you. 
hopefully you guys, you know, kind of were able to kind of learn a little bit from this, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of good insight if you are interested in buying either one of these helmets and you know, a little direct compare and contrast. You guys can see how it looks on, how it looks off, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, anyway, guys, um, I think that's going to do it for me right now. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, you got some good info out of it. And, uh, you know, I will see you in the next one. Later.